Welcome to the eMotion LV1 video tutorials. In the last lesson, we finished our tour of the System Inventory page in the Setup window. Now we'll move on to the two Settings pages. Use the Mixer Settings page to establish the mixer configuration, set latency compensation, define auto save rules, and more. The Mixer Configuration section sets the size of the mixer. This includes the number of channels, auxes, and main outs, and whether or not matrix and groups are available. The eMotion LV1 mixer can have 16, 32, or 64 channels, plus up to 8 stereo groups, 16 mono or stereo aux channels, left, right, center, and mono main outs, and an 8-channel matrix. The maximum mixer size is determined by the eMotion LV1 license. Usually, you'll set the mixer size when you create a session. If you know how many channels you'll use, then it makes sense to start with the right-sized configuration. You can also change the mixer configuration of an active session. If you increase the number of channels, no harm will come to the session, since you've not removed any information. But if you reduce the number of channels in a session, certain information is, of course, lost. Parameters in channels that are no longer part of the session will be discarded. It's a good idea to save a session under a new name before you reduce its size. The Mixing Engine Performance panel sets the mixer's internal processing priority, which affects DSP performance. In the latency-optimized mode, a processing cycle between the mixer and the server's CPU must include all the mixer's signal paths at once, so there isn't any internal routing latency. However, processing in this mode can be less DSP efficient with certain plugins. In the DSP-optimized mode, processing can spread across several buffer cycles. This parallel processing provides greater DSP efficiency. Each buffer has greater processing headroom, so this mode can more easily handle plugins that create big peak loads. Latency varies based on the mixer's internal routing configuration. Certain paths will have zero latency, even in the DSP optimized mode. For example, Here's a simple route that has zero internal latency. However, this route has more stages and does exhibit internal latency, in this case, 16 samples. The server network buffer is the actual amount of time it takes for audio to do the round trip between the mixer and the server. This determines the maximum processing latency. The server network buffer size is set in the server rack of the system inventory page. A buffer size of 40 to 56 samples provides for an internal routing latency of 0 to 32 samples. When the server network buffer is set from 80 to 112 samples, latency can range from 0 to 64 samples and a setting of 160 to 224 samples allows for up to 128 samples of latency. These calculations are based on a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Plugins that exhibit large, intermittent processing spikes can delay the entire processing chain beyond the limits of the network buffer. This is indicated on the DSP meter as a large average-to-peak DSP ratio. The green area displays average DSP use. The orange line shows peak use. If this ratio is especially large, the processor may overload. Should the peak DSP load reach 85%, the display will turn yellow. Adjust your DSP use, or you may encounter drops. Remove or disable whatever plugins you can. If this doesn't help, then switch to the DSP optimized mode or enlarge your server's network buffer value. 
The output routing latency section sets alignment behavior of the output IOs. There are two options. Entire mixer aligned sets the whole mixer to one common delay group. All outputs will be latency aligned. There are no separate delay groups. Aligned by Mixbus delay group enables up to 16 user-definable delay groups, each of which can have separate delays. Every group is aligned internally. Watch Lesson 6.5 to learn more about delay and delay compensation. Mixer Startup sets the condition of the mixer when it launches. Previous session loads the last session based on its most recent user save. Last state loads the most recent session based on its last autosave. When set to empty session, the mixer opens with a blank session each time. The history section sets the rules of automatic saving. Autosave every so many minutes. This turns autosave on or off. The save interval is set with a drop down menu. Range is 3 to 30 minutes. When on scene update is on, an autosave session is created each time a scene is stored or recalled. To load an autosave history session, go to the session page of the show window. Click History and browse for a file. History files are not deleted. New saves do not replace old saves. Delete session files using the host operating system. The entire mixer surface, or selected mixer actions, can be locked to prevent unintended structural changes to a session, such as adding, removing, or copying plugins, or changing external patches. Locking these controls does not affect parameters or internal routing. Activate selected lock options with the lock button on the right side of the top bar. You can also lock the mixer interface, with or without a password. This does not affect the mixer. It just means you can't change anything. There are two items in the troubleshooting section. Enable logging creates a report that's used by Waves technical support for troubleshooting and customer service. The report file is placed on the host computer's desktop. Deselect this for normal operation. When Show Patch Warnings is selected, a prompt is shown whenever you try to create or change a patch in the patch window. Click Update Plugins list to scan your system for new plugins and licenses. The Tempo button sets the tempo for all relevant plugins in the mixer. Most tempo-based Waves plugins can lock to the tempo of the host application. To set the tempo, tap the Tempo button or Control plus T on the keyboard. These taps are averaged to create a tempo value. You can also enter a numeric value. The flashing tempo light helps you to determine if the setting is correct. You can also control the tempo key from an assignable key or from an external control device. As we've seen, the mixer settings page is used to set up the basic configuration and behavior of the mixer. In the next lesson, you'll learn about the user interface page, where you set up meters and program the user assignable keys. Thanks for watching this eMotion LV1 video tutorial. See you next time.